here, you look at this map. Now, in the previous lecture, Paul took a Bible seminar in Troas for how many days? For well, seven days. Then from here, Troas, it was Paul's mind, okay? Now, you listen to me carefully. It was Paul's mind. His, his, his mind was occupied by here Ephesus, Church of Ephesus. Why? Why Church of Ephesus was so important to Paul's mind? Because Paul had spent three years in total ministering and educating, okay, uh, with respect to the school of Tyrannos, okay? So it, Paul considered the Ephesus was the mission center for an entire Roman Empire, okay? So he considered, you know, although the Antioch was the primary mission center, but from Antioch, the mission center had, was transferred to Ephesus. Later, the mission center will be transferred to Rome. Rome. Okay? So we got three major mission centers. Antioch, Ephesus, and Rome. In order to evangelize the entire Roman Empire. That's a Paul's strategy. Now, therefore, Paul, when he was in Troas, even prior to do that, prior to in many, even Corinth, his mind was to revisit Ephesus. Okay, Ephesus was the key key uh, city in the mind of Paul. Now. When he was in Troas, okay, he, he, was, he was going to visit Ephesus, but he could not because the rumors, okay, came that in case Paul uh, visit Ephesus and those people in Ephesus will try to kill Paul. So his disciples advised him, even people in elders in Ephesus advised him not to come Ephesus. Okay? So he could not go. So instead of visiting Ephesus, Holy Spirit Okay, led him down to Miletos. This is another very important city, Miletos. So now, just the south, south of Ephesus, there's Miletos. Okay, he went down to Miletos instead of Ephesus. Now, here in Miletos, Paul sent a message to elders in in Ephesus, would you come to Miletus? So we do not know how many, but quite a number of elders in the city of Ephesus went down to Miletus. Okay, now here Paul and elders, they met in Miletus. And from there, Paul made a special preaching message to the Ephesian elders. That is a very famous message. Okay. But today, in lecture seven, we will be dealing with that. Okay. That we call the farewell message. And Acts chapter 20, verse 17. Paul's farewell 
message to who? To whom? Elders of Ephesian Church. Okay. The story of that, the farewell message was very long. You see, it covers right here. Acts chapter 20, verses 18 through 35. A very long, but very moving story. I often read it. Sometimes it makes me cry with tears. Now, you look at here. We'll see here. Paul said this. You know, you elders, you know. I had stayed with you for three years. He said, three years, right here. Acts chapter 20, verse 31. So it now shows us how many years he stayed all together. Three years. Two years, what? Two years? Training center. Yeah. Now, Paul said, you know, elders, I had stayed with you for three years. They are all listening to him. Okay. Then, then he said, I served the Lord with the great humility, with tears, along with Jews' plots to kill me. Okay. Remember that? In the previous lectures, we have learned that. Okay. So he reminded them, I was about to kill and however, I serve the Lord with great humility. However, he said, I have no hesitation to preach the gospel. Okay, in spite of that uh, troubles, I haven't, I haven't wasted my time, okay, for the preaching the gospel. Because you know elders, like that. He tried to prove himself. Okay. Now, now, time to stay. It's time to say goodbye to you. Because the Bible said that we will not see you again. No more. Okay. No more. We will see you again. But he knew that it will be the last moment. That was he saying that. Okay. Now, then let me challenge you. Let me advise you what to do. That was his kind of an admony, his challenge. Okay. He said that you elders, Holy Spirit made you overseers, means leaders. And shepherd, shepherd, okay? Therefore, therefore, you elders, keep watch over yourself. Because you are leaders and shepherd. Because many sheep are under your leadership. You have to take care of your sheep. Also, watch over your sheep. Your people as leaders. But this is important part. But after he warned that, after I leave you, after I leave you, it was Paul's prophecy. Okay? He said, savage wolves, you know, savage wolves is a very bad wolves, will come among you. You see, here is a this is important for him. Within your church, okay, within your church, bad wolves are there, okay? Although they claim themselves Christians, but bad Christians uh, will arise within your church community, okay, and will attack your ship, ship and wolves, okay? They will destroy your church members' spirituality and they will come with some wrong doctrines, wrong teachings, okay? Therefore, he said, 
he, Paul said, they will distort the truth. You see, the truth, the truth. What is the truth? Jesus, it's Christology. In other words, it's Christology. And the words will come, teach you wrong Christology, wrong Jesus. That's why we should be equipped with strong Christology along with the doctrine of Trinity. The Christology comes the key because enemy's main focus, okay, on distorting doctrine of Trinity and Christology. That's the key enemy's attack. I'm advising you too. Okay? It was a Paul's advice to leaders in Church of Ephesus. What year is it? This letter, this, this event here. In AD 57. Right? It's, it's starting 53 to 57. Now this moment is about to ending the third missionary journey. Okay? So it's 57. Would you just listen to me? Now, three years after, Paul wrote letter to Ephesians. This is AD, prison letter, 62-62. Remember that? That's a letter to Ephesus. Now, you would notice the contents of the letter to Ephesus. Okay, it was it was a short chapter, six chapters. Okay, you will see already the church got all kinds of spiritual problems. Uh, three years after the Paul's warning, already. All kinds of problems occurred in the church. Therefore, it was a leadership obligation. However, among some leaders in the church got okay, distorted and teaching distorted wrong Christology. Not only that, you see here, Later in AD 95, John wrote the Revelation. You see seven churches, chapter 2 and chapter 3, Revelation, seven churches, seven churches in Asia. Remember? Okay? The first church was Ephesus. You see, Jesus spoke to John the spiritual conditions of church in Ephesus. In Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through all the way down to around 7. You see? Now, what problem was? Because the church was, church was problem in what? He said, if you don't repent, I will remove your lamb stand. That much the church, this church had that problem. Because, okay, so Paul already gave pre-warning to elders, but elders did not obey what Paul, okay, pre-warning them. Now, thinking of this, then it's still in the middle of the, the message. This is the end part here. Now, you elders, some of you complain about me. Some of you. 
for that, Paul said, I gave all my life to you guys, okay, to make you to receive inheritance in heaven. In other words, I tried all my best to make you spiritually uh, wealthy and eventually you will be in a high position in heaven. Okay, so well, that was my desire and I have all my effort, okay, poured out to you. In the midst of that, you know you haven't given me any money. I have not received the silver or gold or clothing from you. I have given all my effort, my services, and ministries, okay, at the free of charge. Okay? And he said this it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is a very famous word, okay? The keeper would receive more blessings than receiver. Amen? Paul was a giver. Gospel giver, material giver, even spiritual giver, everything. Even mental giver, encouragement, and so on. So he just emptied all what he had possessed uh, to those disciples. Then Paul said, after that, he said, Paul knelt them down. He said, Paul knelt down with all of them in Acts 20, 36, and prayed together. They all wept. You see, these people, they all got encouraged and inspired by Paul, but that was a very short term. Even weeping, but later we will see here in letter of Ephesians, and here in letter in Ephesians, okay, you will see they haven't changed it. The church got distorted by wrong teachings. And Paul said, okay, these people say, weeping, weeping, and they embraced Paul eh? and kissed him right here. Then Paul took a boat and now he's, he was on the trip to where? Jerusalem. From here, you will see, which we will study the, in the next lecture, from here, in, from Miletus, he took a boat and traveled just, this is Cyprus, okay, not go inside like that. And he arrived here in Tyre. From Miletus to Tyre. From Tyre to Caesarea. From Caesarea to Jerusalem, like that. He didn't go to Antioch. Okay, uh, at the end of the first missionary journey, he went back to Antioch, okay? And at the end of the second missionary journey, he went back to Antioch, okay? But in the third missionary journey, he did not go to Antioch. He went to Tyre and Caesarea and Jerusalem, which we'll study in lecture eight. Lecture 7 is what? Lecture 7 is beginning of what? Paul invited elders in Ephesus, okay, and delivered farewell message. Okay? So I just uh, presented to you the contents of the farewell messages. And also, 
they did not much they was emotionally they were they were weeping uh, you know all this but they really did not obey what paul advised them in the area of what observing and and standing firm in christology okay that's why it is your mandate your obligation to teach your people strong christology okay today is the era of what anti christ religious pluralism okay around the world today therefore it is our pastor's job to teach our people strong christology christ centered teaching amen in jesus name amen <laughs>